let's start where we, or well, let's pick up where we ended last week. The important part was that we defined a strain tensor. Strain tensor as a descriptor of the deformation of the body, an elastic body. And uh, for reasons that we want to distinguish between rotation of material and really change of the shape, we then distinguish between the symmetric parts and anti-symmetric parts of the strain tensor and ended up with the definition of the physical strain tensor that is a symmetrical quantity describing a state of a material and therefore being related to purely to a deformation or, or shape change of the of the sample and uh, at the very end of the lecture we connected the strain with the temperature change we know that the physical quantity or the physical property material property that connects strain generated by the change of the temperature and the temperature itself is called thermal expansion coefficient and this has a very interesting consequences for the symmetries of both the strain tensor as well as the uh, tensor of thermal expansion. Uh, we know that a tensor of thermal expansion as a material property must reflect the crystal symmetry. For example, for cubic material, material expands the same by the same amount along x, y, and z axis. Uh, for hexagonal systems, the expansion in all directions in the uh, basal plane is the same, and the only direction in which it is different is along the uh, c axis. So there is a certain shape of the tensor of uh, thermal expansion, which is induced by the crystal symmetry. Nothing like that applies in general to the strain tensor. Strain tensor is a state property and state can be pretty much anything. We can deform cubic body to make it hexagonal if we want to. We can deform a cubic body uh, with a tetragonal strain, right? There is no reason why not to do that. But as soon as this strain is generated by change of the temperature, therefore by the physical phenomenon called thermal expansion, then the strain will also follow the crystal symmetry. Vice versa, the uh, symmetry of the strain tensor which is uh, that this is a symmetrical strain tensor so that we know that uh, above the matrix diagonal, the elements are the same as below the uh, matrix diagonal. This will be applicable also to the strain tensor, uh, sorry, to the thermal expansion tensor, right? So the thermal expansion must be then a symmetrical matrix. This is what we have roughly spoken about. And the interesting consequence, which I think is, is good to realize, is that thermal expansion of cubic crystals is isotropic. So essentially, there is just one single number which can represent the thermal expansion of cubic materials, number alpha, and then we have a unit matrix in three dimensions or in two dimensions as it's written here. Right, so really to describe a thermal expansion of cubic material, no matter how structurally complex is your cubic material, we may go from a simple FCC towards, I don't know, rock salt structure, towards uh, diamond structure and so on. As soon as your system is cubic, it will have an isotropic thermal expansion and the thermal expansion is fully determined by one single number. If you have uh, a material out of which you carve a certain shape, then upon applying a temperature change, this shape can change, topologically can change. 
right? So it's not only that it expands, but if you form a sphere out of a cubic material, it might expand differently along, let's say, one or all crystallograph directions and along one, one, one directions, right? So if we say this is the one or all crystallographic direction, this is O one O crystallographic direction. Then the point is, how far does this direction expand, which is maybe the one one zero direction? Right? So if I say that because of the crystal symmetry, the expansion along the one O O direction is the same as along the O one O direction, then also in this direction the expansion will be by the same amount, and the shape will remain spherical upon temperature change. If your material is not with a cubic symmetry, so you carve a macroscopic shape and inside you have a tetragonal material, for example, that means that along the x-axis, the thermal expansion is different than along the y-axis, if I exaggerate. Right? And that means that the thermal expansion will be applied differently in different directions. And if you believe me that the red shape that I drawn here is a sphere with quite a lot of imagination, then the green shape that I have drawn here is not sphere anymore. It has a longer one half axis than the other axis. It means we are generating an ellipsoidal, uh, ellipsoidal shape. So if you once again take materials, all of them with macroscopically the same shape, you change the temperature, then you can already say something about the crystal symmetry. On top of that, you can even say something uh, about the uh, principal axis. So for example, if you then get a material which expands to that way that it's ellipsoidal and in the in certain plane you get that the thermal expansion is the same to all directions in other words you find the plane you find the circumference which remains a sphere uh, as a circle then this corresponds to the basal plane of your tetragonal system or hexagonal hexagonal system has the same uh, crystal symmetry when it comes to the thermal expansion as the tetragonal system. It means the one direction which is different to that and in which you get the most uh, ellipsoidal uh, deformation. This will be the direction of your uh, special axis, this particular case, the C-axis of the hexagonal or C-axis of the tetragonal system. And then we ended up here with this one funny example of special materials that have exactly these uh, two different uh, directions uh, or which exhibit maybe tetragonal or hexagonal uh, symmetry with the two different values of thermal expansion, one of them being positive and one of them being negative. This is very interesting behavior, which leads to the uh, fact that there are certain points at the surface which maintain their distance from the origin upon the change of the temperature. So if you would start with a sphere to start with, and the sphere has a radius r, then upon changing temperature, the change changes to ellipsoid, but there will be points at the surface which are still at the distance r from the origin. Right? Obviously, if the thermal expansion is positive in both values, then out of the sphere to start with, you get an ellipsoid. Right? But all the points on this ellipsoid are further apart than the original radius r. In the case that one of them is negative and the other value is positive, you get some value, some, some points which are um, which, which keep their distance from the origin. And these are defining in three dimensions a cone of points at the surface or in general a cone of points in the whole volume. 
And this is called a cone of zero expansion. Here is an example of how to calculate this for calcite, which is the uh, trigonal structure. So basically this is a, a representation of some hexagonal structure uh, with the thermal expansion coefficients as given here. So maybe you tried it, maybe you haven't tried it. In any case, the solution is given on this slide, uh, defining one angle, which is the deviation from the uh, special hexagonal axis uh, X3, how far from here you uh, find the points on this cone of zero expansion. 